Thank you. <laughs> I knew he was gonna do this and it still threw me off. Hey there, I'm Sola El Whaley and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. So it's a little cooking, a little history, and a whole lot of me. What's not to love? All right, you guys, we have been inspired by Oktoberfest here in the Ancient Recipes kitchen. Polka music, lederhosen, bratwurst. We were thinking about making the early version of bratwurst, but we did just stuff some beef bung. So we wanted to try out a different cooking technique and that brought us to the pretzel. I don't know about you, but I love a buttery, warm, soft, salty pretzel. You know, not the kind that's been drying out in a street cart all day. Well, I guess those are okay if you've had a few drinks. So the origins of the pretzel aren't exactly clear. They first popped up during the early medieval times when people didn't really write stuff down. It started showing up again in German baking crusts around 1111. So we're gonna go back to that era and try and recreate the original German Bavarian pretzel. Okay, so we're gonna start by kneading our dough. I've got some whole wheat flour, and at this time, there was two ways that they would get yeast into their dough. One was they would use something called beer bram, which is a foamy byproduct that's left over after using beer, and that's what we're gonna use today. And then the other way is they would just save a lump of dough from the last time they made bread, a lot like how you make sourdough starter. So in my whole wheat dough, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, <laughs> some softened butter, and our beer bram. Beer barm. Beer barm. Should I do that again from the top? <laughs> okay, all right, so we're gonna start by making our dough. I've got some whole wheat flour, salt, softened butter, and beer barm. So that back then there was two ways that, that they would add. <clears throat> okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I knew he was gonna do this and it still threw me off. So in it goes, and then we're gonna add warm water, and then we knead. First, I'm gonna activate my fork here. We want this dough to be kind of moist, soft, supple. Okay. So a lot of modern pretzel recipes include sugar, which we did not add here because back then, sugar wasn't really easy to come by. Sugar cane didn't come to Europe until the Crusaders brought it. And at that time, they still weren't really refining it. There's actually this cool story about an Italian monk in the seventh century AD who would make pretzels as a gift for children who said their prayers because the twisted up pretzel kind of looked like the arms of a child that are crossed in prayer. And it was called pretziola, which meant little reward. So now I really want to get into the kneading. So I'm going to activate tall sola. Okay, so nowadays I think the main thing you think of when you think of a pretzel is the really dark brown crust that you get from washing the pretzel with lye. Sometimes home bakers will use baking soda instead to achieve that like similar dark crust. Now we're not gonna be using lye or baking soda. I know, don't freak out. Back in the medieval times, they didn't have either of those ingredients and we wanna be historically accurate. I know traditional pretzel, it's just all about that dark brown crust, but they didn't have it back then. Sorry guys, this is ancient recipes. But I do recommend if you like pretzels, I think it's good to invest in some lye. I got some lye and I think it's my favorite ingredient. Use gloves, maybe get goggles. Don't have it if you have children, perhaps, <laughs> but it's super fun because now I like, you just uh, brush your pie crust with lye and you have pretzel pie crust. Brush a cookie with lye and you got lye, uh, pretzel cookies. Ooh, you know what's really fun? I made parathas, brush with lye, pretzel paratha. Whoops. Maybe I need more lighting. Sorry. Whoopsie. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You look so natural in that. It's like you belong. So pretzels actually have a strong tie to Christianity, especially in the Middle Ages where Christianity was a lot more strict. Um, some people say that it's a symbol of like spirituality and holiness, maybe because of the three holes that represent the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's actually 
a medieval prayer book with a picture of St. Bartholomew surrounded by pretzels. So many traditional pretzel recipes let the dough rise and ferment overnight before you dip it in lye the next day. <sighs> okay, all right, so my dough is looking smooth. It's coming together. I guess I can deactivate tall sola. And I'm gonna cover it and let it rise for about 45 minutes before we form. All right, so my dough has time to rest and rise, and now we are gonna form. We're gonna make two big honkin' pretzels so they stay nice and soft and fluffy. Boom. So I'm gonna split this in half before I try and roll it into a long one inch log. And then we're gonna do the pretzel -y bit to twist in it up. You know, actually the German word for pretzel is bretzel, uh, likely tied to the Latin word braselle, which means little arms. Cause it's little arms hugging each other. Okay, so for our shaping, the first thing I do whenever I'm forming dough is you wanna press it down and this will redistribute the gases that develop during the fermentation. And then I'm gonna coil it up so we have a really nice gluten structure inside when we go to roll our dough. We kind of just seal the edges a little bit and then we're gonna get rolling. One long, one inch log. There are actually a couple different types of German pretzel, Swabian and Bavarian. The Swabian dough has a little bit more fat and it's a little drier and they have different shapes. So the Bavarian pretzel, which we're making today, it's like one even thickness, while the Swabian has really skinny, crunchy arms and then a chunky base. So you get a little contrast of textures. One thing to keep in mind whenever you're trying to roll dough like this is don't push down. We are trying to pull out it's almost like you're extruding it with your hands. If you push down, you're not gonna maintain that like nice cylindrical shape. Be gentle and stretch. It's more of a stretch than a smush. Whenever I've had to teach a new person how to handle dough, they just wanna squish it, be gentle. It's been rising for you. You wanna be nice to it. Okay, so during Lent, people would actually make a simple form of pretzel with just flour, water, and salt. And I guess during Lent, you're allowed to have snacks. So they would fill up on these little unleavened pretzels. We want one even log of dough because we're making the Bavarian style, yo. Okay, I feel good about that. Now we, the exciting part, we're gonna pretzel our pretzel. All right, come around. We're gonna make a U and then we do a twisty twist and bring it together. I'm gonna try and keep my Shape a little bit even and then smush. Pretzel one, done. We did it, guys. Ready for pretzel two. Same deal. Smush, distribute all those little yeast burps throughout your dough. Roll it up so we make sure there's a nice, good structure of gluten running throughout. The way you form dough is so, so important and really greatly affects how it'll turn out. Okay, now we just get rolling. So it's just like a gentle rolling back and forth and the main pressure is going outward, not down. That's how you keep it nice and even. Just practice with some Play-Doh, you'll get it. I just wanna roll dough all day. Can we just do this for another four hours? I'm gonna give my pretzels a quick dunk in boiling water. And I know, I know, today, the traditional modern pretzel, you always think about that really dark burnished outside that you get from dunking it in lye, or some people at home use baking soda, but they didn't have baking soda or lye in the medieval ages, so we're not gonna use it. Don't freak out. We wanna keep it accurate to the ancient recipe. So we are gonna skip the lye and instead go for just a quick dunk in boiling water. This is also something that you see a lot with bagels. By dunking it in the boiling water, we're gonna pre-gelatinize the starches on the outside so you get a nice chewy exterior. So um, let's go for a swim. These are big guys, so maybe, I don't wanna deform them. So perhaps, Gif, will you help me lift so we can get it more gentle, gentle fully into the water? Team lift. 
gentle pull. Whoa, whoa. There we go. Whoops. Real quick. Thank you. So, depending on how long you dunk it in the water, it does two things to the texture. So a quick dunk is gonna keep the dough really soft and chewy, which is what I want, so I'm not gonna go crazy. But if you let it stay in there longer, it will actually prevent the dough from rising in the oven for a chewier, denser pretzel. But I want something soft and fluffy. So I'm gonna, okay, now I gotta scoop that. We're gonna get in here. I'm gonna go for something relatively fast. Boom. Okay. Let me reform you because I deformed you. And while it's nice and moist, I'm gonna sprinkle it with pretzel salt so it sticks. All right, let's get the second one in. May I have a, an, an assist, sir? Ah, oh, thank you. Cool, cool. These are big guys. All right, excellent. And this is gonna make the outside nice and chewy, a little bit shiny. It's not gonna have that super dark color. The way that works is that um, the lye, or some people use baking soda at home, makes the surface of the dough really alkaline, and stuff that's alkaline brown is just a lot better. It's like a really good trick. If you want really, really brown chicken, like you're roasting a chicken and you want that skin to be really nice and dark, mix a little bit of baking soda in with the salt, sprinkle it all over, you're gonna have like the brownest, crunchiest chicken. And now I'm gonna just give it a little slash at the bottom for the traditional shape. Just right across here, like a little smiley face. Cool, and these are gonna go into the oven to bake, and then we're gonna taste. Okay, I think it is time. Gif, bring on the pretzels. Thank you. You're welcome. I like your commitment to this job. Okay, pretzels are out of the oven. Time to taste. First, I'm gonna butter them up. A good pretzel always needs butter. Oh yeah. Why even bother if there isn't butter, right? This probably would not be good for Lent, this buttered leavened pretzel, but it's good for me right now. I'm being very generous because I don't mess around. Let's hit this one too. Whoa. Cool, cool. Okay, so. You, you can see the difference. Because we didn't use the lye, this doesn't have that really, really dark brown burnished vibe, but the boil did give us like kind of a nice smooth, shiny crust. A little bit, a little bit. So let me just dig in. I'm gonna rip off one of these arms. Let's see, it's still really nice and soft. Because we used beer barm instead of just sourdough or commercial yeast, that's the first flavor I get. Just like that yeasty beer vibe, which I'm into. It's not as soft and fluffy as, um, as a pretzel you would get today. I think it's just a little bit more dense because we don't have commercial yeast to really poof it up. Um, and I, think, I just think that's because that, that beer barm doesn't give you the same kind of leavening as commercial yeast. Um, we're losing that like, you know, alkalized pretzel taste because we don't have that live vibe here, but the pretzel salt is giving me that texture and familiarity of pretzel vibes. And I mean, it looks like a pretzel. And there's so much butter. Butter, flour, salt, you really can't go wrong with those things. So I think this is, you know, it's pretty good. Would I make this again? You know, I just, I feel like personally, when I want a pretzel, I want it dunked in lye. So I'm definitely missing that. 
But other than that, you know, this was really fun and it's just interesting to learn the roots of something that you think you know so well. So I'm happy to have tried this. If you like this episode, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, if there's any vintage or ancient recipe you wanna see me try out, drop it in the comments and I will see you here next time.